Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're going to head down to England and we're going to have a look at a collaboration beer between two very well respected English breweries. And you've seen me review things from both of these guys on the channel before. So for the home brewery then, we're going to go down to Derbyshire, which is the sort of Manchester, Nottingham, Sheffield kind of area. And we're having a look at another beer from Thornbridge Brewery. This one is the Yalamu, which comes in at 7.4% ABV. They're describing it as a double IPA and it's a collaboration with Magic Rock Brewing who are from nearby in Huddersfield in Yorkshire. So it should be a really interesting beer this one. This is one that's available in Tesco stores here in Scotland and I guess throughout England and places like that as well. But as I say, I've reviewed beers from both of these breweries before. Magic Rock, we know, are a very good IPA brewery, and uh, Thornbridge do a whole variety of, uh, of interesting beers. So cool to return to them after quite a while. I think I've only done maybe three or four reviews from Thornbridge before, so this review is a little bit long overdue. But as I say, this beer available in Tesco's for £3 a can, which is pretty good for uh, when you consider what it is. So um, yeah, curious to try this one, and as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about both the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites that link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Thornbridge Brewery and from Magic Rock Brewing. No doubt you'll see more from both of those at some point in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go and to the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Thornbridge Brewery first off then, since these guys are the home brewery. On to my brewery notes. So Thornbridge Brewery is basically attached to an estate and uh, Thornbridge Hall dates back from the 12th century and it was the home of the Longston family until the late 18th century when it was bought by John Morewood. So the house changed hands many times over the coming years and it was extended to its current form in 1896 by George Marples. The house was also a teacher training college for a period after the war that, fin that finished in 1945 of course and at this time it was owned by Sheffield City Council. So the house is currently owned though by Jim and Emma Harrison who bought it back in 2002 and this couple of also own a few pubs. They own the Cricket Inn in Totley, the Coach and Horses next to the Sheffield United Stadium and also the Inn in Tronway which are all part of the Thornbridge Company. But Jim also owns the Pack Horse Pub in Little Longston as well. So Thornbridge Brewery itself was founded back in 2005 and their original brewery was a very small 10 barrel operation in the grounds of Thornbridge Hall in Great Longston in Derbyshire. But the brew house was a converted joiner and stonemasons workshop and initially they wanted to just produce a small range of cask beers for the local market but their beers proved to be very very popular and they decided to grow the company from there. So as of 2009, the larger part of the brewery production uh, was going on at the company's headquarters in Bakewell. However, some of the beers were still brewed with a kind of traditional infusion mash system in their original brewery. But the main brew kit was built by Velo, who are from Venice in Italy. There's quite a few breweries that have Italian brew kits and canning lines and things like that as well. But in 2015, they celebrated their 10th anniversary and today their output now exceeds 30,000 hectolitres of beer per year. That was the latest figure that I was able to find, but it seems to have been around for quite a while. I wouldn't be surprised if that figure is inaccurate. But in 2019, last year, they moved moved their taproom and offices to make way for a new canning line. As you can see, that's been successful and they're getting their cans out there. And they're also planning to build a new visitor centre, which should open in the summer of 2020 as well. And as of February 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, according to Untapped, they've produced around 230 different types of beer. So a very well respected brewery, this one, probably their most famous or well-known beer, I guess you could say, would be the Jaipur IPA, which is one that I really need to review for you at some point. That's a fairly easy beer to get a hold of, so I will make sure that I uh, take a look at that for you the next time I come home to Scotland because it's supposed to be pretty nice actually. Um, but that's one of the things you'll notice about this brewery. There are a good number of the beers that are named after um, Indian things basically. So I looked up what the word Yelamu uh, means 
and apparently it's a type of like conversation type it's a that, you know, a monologue, conversation type thing, but this comes from the Tengalu or Tengulu uh, language in India actually, which uh, is spoken by about 70 odd, 80 odd million people from what I can understand. There's lots of different languages over there in India of course, but Hindi and English are the kind of uh, more common ones from what I gather. But um, yeah, a really interesting brewery this one, a very well known English craft beer name and one that you should check out if you get the chance. Their beers are exported a fair little bit, but they're very easy to come across across in England and we see them quite regularly up here in Scotland as well so make sure you check them out but that's all you really need to know about Farmbridge Brewery for the moment if you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out Rate Beer, Beer Advocate and Untapped to see information on all the different beers that they do so yeah, on to the second brewery then. Let's move over to Yorkshire, to Magic Rock Brewing. So as I've told you before, Magic Rock Brewing are based in Huddersfield in Yorkshire in England. They were established back in 2011 by the brothers Richard and Johnny Burhouse, although Johnny left the company quite early on and they were joined uh, as well by head brewer Stuart Ross. So the beer brewing began in mid-2011 and their beers proved to be very, very popular and they won the accolade of Best New Brewery of 2012 from Rate Beer. And when you consider that there's a lot of American breweries and breweries from all over the world basically involved in that. That is a pretty impressive feat actually and the brewery have, uh, you know, quite rightly in my experience held their reputation. Um, but the brewery was largely inspired by the American craft beer so they do a lot of IPAs and stuff like this and uh, they've been expanding their staff and capacity steadily over the last couple of years. Um, since 2015 the brewery have been based in the Willow uh, in the Willow Business Park in Berkby and they now employ somewhere in the region of about 40 people but the new site has a brewing capacity of 15,000 hectolitres of beer per year and they're continually expanding their fermentation capacity to build that up. In March of 2019 though last year Magic Rock was bought by the Australian group Lion Beverages who own Four Pure in London and they also own Little Creatures in Australia and the Panhead Beers in New Zealand along with Castlemaine Forex which is a big macro beer brand from Brisbane and also James Bogues Lager which if I remember correctly is Tasmanian, really nice lager that one actually um, but this means that some of the Magic Rock beers are now brewed in Australia and New Zealand sort of under licence if you like and they're distributed around there as well so for those of you watching further afield you might find it a little bit easier to uh, get a hold of some of the Magic Rock beers then. So yeah, give them a go if you get the chance. Probably my favourite ones that I've had from these guys, the Cannonball series is always really interesting. They've done a whole host of uh, different IPAs and stuff like this. Um, but the Dark Heart Stout is one that always stood out to me. I really quite like that. That was Robert Hopsin that introduced that one to me. Uh, and I'm trying to think what else. Um, it's not coming to me just now, but the Cannonball series, as I say, is definitely worth checking out and pretty much any IPA uh, from them is, is definitely worth checking out as well. So um, yeah, an English brewery, that, another English brewery I should say, that you definitely need to check out if you get the chance. So let's leave it at that for Magic Rock Brewing then. So as always, you can check out the brewery website in the description below if you want to learn more. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out Rate Beer. Uh, untapped and uh, Beer Advocate to find out more information on these guys. As of February 2020, Magic Rock have produced in the region of a hundred different beers according to Untapped. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this one then. So as I mentioned to you, this one is a 7.4% double IPA as they're calling it. I would argue that this is just a very strong single IPA. I would always say that it's above 7.5% is the mark where you start getting into the, the kind of imperial category. But you know, that's me kind of nitpicking a little bit. Maybe at one point before I might have said 8% ABV is, uh, is a double IPA. But this one's hot with Simcoe, Amarillo and Mosaic. And now we can get rid of the brewery notes then. So um, yeah, so Simcoe as we know is a very smooth passion fruity hop. Um, Amarillo is the big oily orange hop and Mosaic is that kind of nice juicy um, tangerine kind of one as well. But as you can see with the artwork on this one, um, this is de this is most definitely Thornbridge artwork. Um, the Yala uh, Yalamu, as I said to you, means like a monologue or a type of speech or something like that in the Tengulu language from India. As I say, Thornbridge like to name a number of their beers after different things in India. But yeah, 7.4% double IPA this one. Let's have a taste of this and see how we go. We'll get it out and into the glass. A 440ml can. As I said to you, this one is available in Tesco's. 
throughout uh, Scotland and in England and other countries of the UK as well. So let's get this guy out and into the glass. Yeah, so as you can see from this one and as you would expect, it's poured a lovely, this one's a kind of medium orange colour. This It does have a little bit of a yellow tint to it, but it's poured kind of very much like a sort of hazy New England type IPA. This one, you can see that there's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say cream coloured head on this one. It's not perfect white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, it does look really quite nice actually. A very a typical IPA these days, looking more like a kind of New England one. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this beer is pretty much opaque. A lot of kind of haziness going on to it, but it does look as you would expect for an IPA in 2020. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma of this one then and see how we get on. Oh yeah, you can actually smell all of the hops having a bit of influence here. So first impression I would say it's the mosaic and the Simcoe that jump out of this one for me. You can really get that smooth passion fruity note that you would expect from Simcoe. That is kind of there. And you also get the lighter, juicier tangerine notes out of this one as well, which is the mosaic. And if you take it in a bit more deeply, then you start to get the oily oranges from the Amarillo. I've always found that Amarillo's just, it feels that little bit more oily in its orangey character. Uh, from Mosaic and if you've watched the channel before as well you'll know that I'm a huge fan of these big orangey hops you know Mandarina Bavaria, Pacifica, I think it's Waiiti as well has some lovely oranges from New Zealand um, Azaka, um, Mandarina Bavaria, I'm forgetting um, Mosaic and Amarillo of course Sabro is a new one that's got a lot of that so a lovely juicy light orangey or oily orange and, and juicy tangerine note coming out of this a little bit of pineapple almost as well, which is one of the complexities you can sometimes get from Mosaic. Mosaic's got a few really interesting traits to it. But yeah, some passion fruit in at the back there as well. But a lovely smooth, juicy smelling IPA, I have to say. And as I say, you know, to get things like this in your supermarket for £3, which is, uh, what, about €3.50, Euros 50, something like that these days, that is pretty damn impressive, I have to say. So, yeah, on the green side of the hops, Definitely leaning towards the grassy end of the spectrum. You can get a little touch of earthiness out of it, which is mosaic, of course. Not so much in the way of floral character for me. Really more of a grassy beast, this one. Um, in terms of the malt base, you can pick out a little bit of the wheatiness in there. But to me, this is leaning more towards the smooth, kind of creamy end of the spectrum. Definitely some nice big oaty notes in there. Um, yeah, definitely a big oaty quality to this one, I would say really comes across as more of a smooth, slightly sweet leaning IPA. What does it tell you in the back here, what it has? Um, it just says barley, wheat, hops and yeast, so yeah, I guess not, um, yeah, I'm guessing not really any oats in this one, but it says that it's golden malts that's in, or is that just the colour? I thought that was the malts, I was going to say maybe golden promise in this one, but no. But yeah, a really nice smell in IPA, this one very smooth um, and juicy. So let's have a taste of it then and see how we get on. This one is the Yalamu. Coming in at 7.4% ABV, a double IPA from Thornbridge Brewery in Derbyshire in England in collaboration with Magic Rock from over in Huddersfield in Yorkshire. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Yeah, definitely a New England type IPA this one, a nice kind of smooth, hazy IPA actually. Um, I like how this goes together, it's another really solid effort, but I mean with the reputation that both of these breweries have, you really wouldn't expect anything less from them. That's a solid take on the kind of modern, hazy type IPA if you like, so thumbs up to both breweries here. Let's try and dissect the flavour a little bit and describe it a bit more. So yeah, Straight away in the middle of your palate then, you get that nice, um, that nice kind of white, bready, wheaty kind of note. That blankets the middle of your tongue. You can feel it dry out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. And the wheat, in fairness, does have a little bit of bite to it. Um, in some ways, this actually reminds me of some of the Swedish IPAs that I review more regularly. It does have a little bit of that crispness to it. So if you go to the back of the palate, 
in particular, you'll notice that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee bit of Pilsner malt in this, just to give you a little bit of crispness and uh, drinkability. And that's a bit surprising when it's 7.4%. Um, so, I mean, most of these kind of Swedish IPAs sit around the 6.5% mark. We call them the Swedish West Coast IPAs. It really reminds me of that a little bit, but obviously it's a wee bit stronger. But as I've said to you before, um, I really find that once you start to go above 8% with the, the hazy New England types, you struggle to cover the booziness there. But then the English guys, uh, I think it was Peter and uh, Craig that had mentioned to me, the other half uh, over in New York, they're one of the breweries that are really apt at that but uh, you know if you know some other ones in that regard let me know as well but I think that if you want to go higher than 8% really it has to be a west coast IPA for me so 7.4% is a pretty good level I think for this type of beer but yeah so the malt base in this one, I can feel there's a little touch of biscuity sweetness in the middle of the palate there too that'll be the kind of boozy notes, it does sweeten up a little bit the further you go into your aftertaste too. On the front corners of the palate, if you move in a little bit, you start to get some of the, like a few little woody undertones out of this one, but those are very, very minimal. You really have to look for them. Mainly it's a smooth, kind of pale malty, flat uh, malt base that you get out of this, but it does get a little bit more bitey the further you go into the aftertaste too. You can feel some of these kind of wheaty notes pushing their way out of this one actually, which is quite nice. But yeah, um, with this one then, uh, on the hoppy side of things, if you go towards the back corners of the palette, you get a little bit of earthiness there. That's the mosaic that's giving you that. It can have a little bit of that darker earthiness. But as you come further forward along the sides of the palette, you will see it gets a little bit more kind of floral and aromatic. This one almost does have a little bit of a kind of piney resiny note out of it. And I don't remember Amarillo or Simcoe really being piney, but this one really does lean a little bit more towards that for me. It does have a little bit of a have a little bit of bitterness to this. It could also be like Columbus perhaps is being used as a bittering hop because it really does come across as being almost a little bit spicy. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is Columbus in this as a bittering hop come to think of it. But around the front curve of the palate there's a little bit of um, lighter grassiness in there and that complements the flavour quite nicely as well. Let's just fire the last little bit of this in there. You can see it's just got that little bit more hazy actually. Um, but yeah, let's look at the fruity side of this beer then. I think we've described the green side of the hops quite well. And the aroma, it really leans towards the grassy side of things, but you'll see in the flavour, it leans towards that big, spicy, kind of floral character actually. So yeah, fruity side of things then. So as I always say, the fruity esters come out in that little oily bubble behind the very front curve of your palate. And if you go to the back of that, you do get a little bit of a darker kind of passion fruity note there. That will be the Simcoe, but interestingly, I've always found that Simcoe is a little bit lighter and creamier in terms of its um, passion fruity qualities. But as you move further forward from that, it gradually becomes a little bit more lighter. Um, I'm actually finding that the, the oranges are not quite as obvious in this as they were in the aroma. That's an interesting point to make about this one. I mean, yeah, if you focus on the fruits from the beginning when you take the beer in, you'll get a little bit of that oily orange that you would expect from the Amarillo. You get a little bit of the lighter, juicier tangerine as well, but then the beer really starts to lean towards that darker um, tropical fruit, you know, the passion fruit, and it's almost, it is almost a little bit grapefruity actually as well, which is interesting. So you do get the oranges in the beginning, but the further you go into the aftertaste with this one, it's that spicy floral aromatic -y note that comes out of it, and you start to get those darker tropical fruits in there as well. So that's an interesting point to make about this beer. I would say that compared to other um, hazy type IPAs that I've come across recently, this one does have a little bit more um, kind of bite and um, hoppiness to it actually. It's almost got just a little bit of that waste, that classic kind of West Coasty character actually, a little bit of the dankness almost. So quite an interesting beer this one. I'm not sure if it is intended more as a, a hazy IPA or if it is um, you know, supposed to be a little bit more of a kind of hybrid if you like. Um, it actually says on the side here, Ilamu 
It's a collaboration with our good friends at Magic Rock and is powerfully hot, a powerfully hopped double IPA. Expect a ferociously full flavoured beer with a juicy character and well balanced body. I would, you know, this beer, I have to say, I would agree with them on that. It is well balanced, but it does certainly have that, the powerful hop thing. It really, that's really saying it's a bit more like a West Coast um, IPA. So that's a nice touch they've done with this. So it's a little bit old school, this one. You mean the hops in here. Mosaic has been around for a little bit now. Um, Amarillo and Simcoe are some of the classic high alpha acid hops. These guys are all in the um, 11 to 14 percent alpha acid range which is going to give you that big bitterness but probably they've been used a bit later in the brew so I suspect there's Columbus um, underneath those uh, used earlier in the brew to give you the IBUs but um, yeah it's a solid solid beer this one nice drinkable um, New England type IPA but it's got a little bit more of that dankness and things you'd expect of the west coast let's look at the mouthfeel quickly then So yeah, overall, I'd say that it's a mid-body beer. It's leaning towards the top end of mid-bodied in fairness. Carbonation is very smooth. Um, it's it's mainly a smooth beer, this one. It's not really got much in the way of oily character. Um, there's a good bit of hoppy bitterness to this. I wouldn't be surprised if this is at least 50. It could even be pushing 60 IBUs. If this is one of these ones that's only 30, I'd be very surprised about that. I think it's at least... 50 you're getting out of this. I think there's a, a good bit of Columbus in this, I suspect. Um, but yeah, good little bit of hoppy bitterness in there. Some of the danker West Coasty qualities. Malt base is very light and very smooth. Not too much in the way of sweetness out of it. And the fruits, as I say, it's a little bit more oily and orangey when you take it in. A little bit sweeter, I think. But as you progress into the aftertaste, it gets a little bit kind of darker. And uh, yeah, definitely a little bit more darker. And... Uh, danker. It's, it almost has some of the flavours you'd expect of an old school West Coast IPA to be honest with you. But a solid beer from Thornbridge and uh, Magic Rock and as I said with these two breweries and their reputations you wouldn't expect anything less. So have a go at this one if you enjoy a kind of New England smoothness uh, to your IPAs but you want a bit more of a West Coast dankness this is a good beer to hit up I would say. So um, yeah let's leave it at that. Once again thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Thornbridge and from Magic Rock. We will return to both of these breweries at some point fairly soon. Like I said, the Jaipur is one from Thornbridge that I really need to review because that's um, it's a little bit of a staple English IPA, I would say. I really need to check that one out. But awesome to turn to return to these breweries after a while, particularly Thornbridge, because you have you will see some other Magic Rock beers in this kind of uh, in this trip to Scotland that I've done um, but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon the Yalamu uh, double IPA it's 7.4% I would say it's still debatable that it's a double IPA but um, a hazy nice and bitter um, IPA this one so let's leave it at that from Magic Rock in Huddersfield in Yorkshire and Thornbridge in Derbyshire Slanjo, Skull, cheers thanks for watching